Hi there traders and welcome to Trade the Structure and the morning market recap for the US session. Okay, so we're going into the Asian session at the moment. So we're just going to review the major moves and what the FOMC or Powell had to say last night. So obviously he's uh, given a go ahead to interest rate rise. Expect the first interest rate rise in the US to be around March. Uh, but there's more to it. I think they, they really did admit that inflation is well ahead of what they expect. And there's going to be more, maybe more bottlenecks that are going to hold up inflation. So maybe expect some faster rate rises or more rate rises this year than what the market might be projecting. But I still think um, with the bonds, bonds are still pricing and that, you know, that four rate rises for now, uh, for the year. So that's probably at the moment what they're expecting. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Yeah, Powell, Powell said last night, expect that, but also expect a massive, uh, significant reduction in the asset holdings from the Fed Reserve, okay, which means no more support, which means, you know, higher interest rates are on the cards, which means you would expect the markets to be capped on the share markets because they've factored in that much growth uh, with really cheap rates that now they're looking down the barrel of a higher cost of debt um, that's going to cap any growth prospects. And remember, it's not about... Um, what will happen is about what people think will happen and if it's already been projected in before it's been factored into the market then there's going to be some heat coming out so we're expecting that there's less growth so people have been buying it up share market for the last few years now um, because it's been the only real asset that's performed well uh, the only real big asset to put um, share to put money and that is now changing so there's becoming you know with the bonds themselves say with um, you know big funds and things like that that have to allocate into a yielding asset bonds are going to become a, a more of a yielding asset uh, and with with share markets overextended it could cause a bit of problems and a bit of a sell-off uh, but that's what the market's saying at the moment they're starting to you know get a bit edgy uh starting to see some selling coming to the pre um into the markets that we could look at this at the moment with the big s p uh the s p 500 now you see it did work its way up after this big sell-off it's worked its way up into this um 4460 so it's retesting that break of that support level so you got support becomes resistance. It's broken to that, held that. It was actually up for most of the session up until 6 a.m. Sydney time where it got knocked down. That was the FOMC release and it got knocked down there. So that's held that level. Uh, what I'd be looking for if we start to get any sort of pop up, I'd look to see if um, there could be rallies get sold into. It just depends on what happens. Okay, but that's if we start to get lower highs, we could get a bit of a run on it. And you can see longer term, there's a lot of room to move on the downside. There's a lot of long-term buyers that are ready to get squeezed out if that's going to play out. Okay, the Dow, same sort of action. The Dow, um, you can see that it was actually you know, positive coming into 6 a.m. and then sell off, sell off, okay, got knocked down again. It's coming down. We've still got that range kind of action on the Dow where it's been supported previously. You support it in here, support it in here, potentially support it again, but the longer-term trend has been broken. So whether it goes into a range or whether we're going to come off this as a lower high, and pressure down is yet to be seen just yet. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a bit of a, a bounce in here, but if we start to form something like that, then I think um, that's going to be over with and we're going to get some you know, sellers coming in if it doesn't break back up above this level of 34,800. So, okay, the NASDAQ is probably the one to watch. And the same sort of scenario was positive, sold off into the close. It managed to end with gains, but it was a negative close. Okay, so don't worry too much about the, you know, the positive actual move or the, the result was in green. It doesn't mean that there's, it was just some bearishness into the market close and it hasn't you know, closed above the previous session's high, uh, previous session's close, sorry. So still same sort of action. It's hovering around the support zone. Okay, are we going to get this as a lower high pressure down or are we going to start to react up and off? I think that's going to play out in a couple of days. It's just going to say what the market's expecting, okay, over the next couple of sessions. I think longer term, momentum's down. We've got some short-term momentum bounce. Doesn't look so good for the, from the short-term momentum perspective. But it's just about whether we do the same sort of thing. If we start to not break up above this high and we start to hold something like that, then I'll be quite negative on it. Okay, and that's basically the overall market. You've got, if we're negative on the NASDAQ and tech stocks, the S&P is going to be negative. It's just the fangs that should drive in the S&P. Okay, look at the DAX. They had a big bounce yesterday. I think um, a lot of bargain hunting really pressured them high. I don't know if there's any news that triggered that. I don't think so. I would expect that it's just more that that's been sold off so hard uh, right into that support level that support held. Everyone's you know buying the dip again, right? And expecting that. But the fact is they actually finished before 6 a.m., well before 6 a.m. And I would expect that to end up right down when it opens tonight. Okay, well, we're gonna have a really negative open. I expect on the DAX and that goes for the uh, the Dow, sorry, the FTSE as well. Okay, so the same sort of reaction. You've got this this level holding, nice little level, bounced off that level, held, held a push into that level, and then bank straight up. 
Okay, and it was a positive uh, session yesterday, but they haven't reacted to the FOMC news at all. Okay, so expect that that's going to open down and potentially push back into these zones, give it all back again. Um, ASX yesterday, well, it was closed yesterday, sorry. This is the session before. It was, I would expect this to open up because the actual session um, since the CFD closed or the futures market closed, it was actually positive. So it's up slightly. I would expect that to potentially just to open up a bit positive um, come 10 o'clock today. And then in a few hours, just under a few hours, actually just under an hour from now, expect it to open positive. But I wouldn't be surprised if we get some bearish action that keeps pressing in this support zone. The only thing that's going to buy it is bargain hunting. And I don't think that we're going to get some bargain hunting on the XJO today because of what's happening in the US and because we're talking up interest rates. It's been the main focus for everything. Okay. And there's obviously problems between Ukraine and Russia that are weighing on the markets. There's more Omicron weighing on the market. So there's a bit of negativity weighing on the markets. Be surprised if you get some massive buying bargain hunting to really push it back up. I would expect probably maybe a pop on the open and then you know, drifting lower, whether it gets through that support or not, it's a different story. Uh, look at the dollar index, that's a big one. Look at the way that ramped up. So that's pressuring dollar denominated um, currencies, anything dollar denominated, gold. Gold is you know, the last thing at the moment, it's been an inflation hedge, which everyone, you know, traditionally gold's an inflation hedge. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but it's not, it's getting, you know, smacked down when you get a, a rally in the dollar, the US dollar. Now, do expect still the US dollar is going to continue on its way up. We're in that resistance zone up here at the moment. But I, I expect this over the Christmas period was just a big flush, flush out some um, some buyers, squeeze them back out and start to build again. Okay, as we talk about interest rate rise, I can't see the US dollar really going down too hard because they are talking about the US um, interest rate rises. And interest rate rises mean a better yield to the US dollar, better yield compared to say the Euro, the, the Aussie, the pound. If they're not going to rate, rate, raise rates, I'll spit that out, they're not going to raise rates, but they are in the US, there's going to be a massive flow out of those currencies into the US dollars just as a as a holding, uh, as a big, you know, a yield play into the currencies. So I would expect that potentially just to hover around here, maybe a bit of a flush low, hold a leather high low, but the trend is definitely up on the US dollar, which is not going to help you know, your currencies. Just quickly go over that. You can see the currency's got knocked down. That's the euro trending down at the moment, <clears throat> broken out of that that rising trend, just continually pressing down with uh, lower highs. It is into some support through here, but I think the way this is pressured down, you can see it was a good push down, a grind back up again, and even flush up. And now we're gonna, I would expect it to get back into a new leg down. So it'd be interesting to see if this zone through the 112, say 112 can hold up, or 112.50 can hold up or whether it's just going to bounce up and off that level, which I don't think so. I would expect more that's going to be linked into the US dollar than anything else. But if it keeps grinding down, just look for those lower highs to work into. Uh, same with the pound. The pound will just be looking to lower highs. If we get a bit of a bounce, see how sellers react. If they can sell into pops and they're just keeping the pressure on, that's what I'll be looking for on the currencies mainly. Uh, Aussie, much the same. You can see that got smacked down, held off that level there. We were speaking about that level yesterday. We had a little trade opportunity off that that zone after news, news spiked into that zone, good short, come and retest it, held, so that's a definite level now, after this retesting and holding, and now I would be just looking for potentially a, to work off maybe this level hidden here, or it might be, you know, that sort of a zone through there, if it pops into that zone, you know, somewhere around 170, 140 or thereabouts, even a bit lower, starts to hold the lower high into this area through here, uh, just draw that up, this low through here, if it can't get through there, then look to, um, I'll be looking to sell it anyway and see if we can get some sort of lower high pressure in the market down. You can see that longer term MACD is potentially looking to roll. Okay. And that's what we want. The longer term rolling. We just want a short term entry signal. Okay. Um, US yen, a bit of a mixed bag. You can see how that US dollar rally, it wasn't really a safe haven buying, which um, capped any of that US dollar buying, uh, safe haven into the yen. So market's pressing higher. So if it just continues to see some pressure up in the US dollar, expect that uh, currency pair to, continue to grind higher, especially off this major double bottom here, this retest fail, we call it. Okay, so there could be a lot of action on the upside. So really for this play, I'll be looking for some sort of pullback, see if we can hold the high low and see if we can get a, a run up. Gold, that gold continues to disappoint a lot of bulls, a lot of gold bugs. It's on the daily, like I said, the daily is good. If we just get to click over to the daily, don't mind the daily. It's still got that action, you know, it's holding lower highs and higher lows, but you don't, you don't want to be going buying this in case it does start to break down, you know, traditional hedges or whatever you want to call it, uh, inflationary hedges out the window. We don't know just yet, but it is reacting down when the US dollar is reacting up on inflation news. So if it was an inflation hedge, it should be it's finding some buyers, but it's not. It's getting hammered. 
okay? But still, that's a longer term contraction. We need these to hold if you wanna be, um, you know, you wanna see new highs. You need these high lows to hold and start to break out through this um, 1877 level. But for now, it's still holding that downtrend on the daily and it's reacting lower. So we'll go back to the 30 minute chart. So really be interesting to see what happens you know, around this 1830 zone. If it starts to grind its way back up, reacting down and off that, worth a short. Okay, especially if the US dollar start to um, look like it's going to continue off. If US dollar pulls back, builds a higher low. This will more than likely start to push up to this 1830. And then we'll look for that to roll over as the US dollar bounces. Now, if the US dollar gets hit hard, uh, looking to get hit hard, look for some high lows to work along off on gold. Okay, but I'm just looking at for it to be linked to the US dollar at the moment, not worrying about inflation. Okay, crude oil, talking about inflation, that's getting a bit of a run on, uh, run on because of Ukraine and Russia tensions, tensions over that will trigger um, supply demand issues potentially into crude, which that will concerns into crude, which means less supply, you know, a run higher on crude. And that's inflationary too. So talk of inflation uh, is gonna be buying, or talk of growth is gonna be buying into oil as well. So it's looking at the moment, this was from a few days ago, don't worry too much about this. Let's get rid of that. Uh, what have we got there? There we go. So held high low. This level through here is a key one. This high low started working off that high low. Then you want to be long. This is prime. This prime entry long here was really nice. Uh, for now, we're still just pushing out of that daily resistance zone. So it could continue higher, but I'd be looking for with this kind of extension. I'd be looking for a deeper pullback, potentially back down to this level. Flush that. If you can hold the high low off there, that's what I'd be looking for. Okay, if it push, pushes back into that zone and starts to do something like this, yeah, then I might want to get long in there just to see if it can go. But that's about it for that. Hong Kong, sorry, copper. Look at copper now. Copper's reacting with the US dollar. US dollar higher, copper lower. So at the moment, I don't want to be trading this until we start to see the US dollar potentially rolling over and see if we can get a high low to work off. But for now, it's still you know longer term chop above around that four was it four point six and support here at four thirty eight so I wouldn't mind if it starts pressure and support and the US dollar gets a bit extended might be a buyer for higher low but for now I'll just be leaving that alone. Uh, bonds bonds move down look at that move down they got hammered so that's a yield yields are you know spiking up so that's just talk of Fed interest rate rises coming soon. Probably more there might be a chance there's more than expected. So I would expect bonds to be pressured down as yields are pressured up. Okay, as long as that's your 10 years and then your 30 years. <coughs> Excuse me, running short of steam here. So that's it, guys. Um, that's the morning recap for the US. A few levels to keep an eye out. Um, we'll see how the market goes, how it takes this news, whether it can take it in its stride and we buy the dip again, or whether there's going to be more of a sell off into the US equities as there's a bit of an unwind of longer term longs that are potentially extended. Um, you know, share prices are, again, have been extended for quite a while. Whether we start to see a bit more of a reversion to the mean on that, we'll have to wait and see. All right, guys, like I said, uh, thanks for joining me. If you'd like to leave a like, it'd be much appreciated. Help us spread the word and remember to check out the website, www.tradestructure.com.